What's up guys, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So, I'm gonna continue the story that you saw last week on Swamp and Stomp where uh, me and Robbie stocked up to a really nice eight point on public land here in South Florida. Then we went back and we got another close encounter with him and if you haven't seen that yet, click this right up here. Um, there's gonna be a link that'll take you to that video, you should watch it first. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story with some visual aid uh, to to give you an idea of another awesome encounter that we had that opening weekend. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, share it with your friends. We appreciate all of you guys, and especially our Patreon members, because without you guys, it wouldn't be possible to do these giveaways. So thank all of you. Now let's get into some deer hunting. That is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. All right guys, it's that time again. It's time for a shout out. This time around, we're giving a shout out to Nail Queen Crystal. Crystal is a nail artist. She can uh, do some pretty cool stuff on nails. So if you got a lady friend, uh, daughter, or anybody who needs to get their nails done, go check her out on Instagram. That's Nail Queen Crystal. Uh, she's down in Miami. Uh, and by the looks of it, she does a really great job. And actually, Danny's wife used to go there back when they uh, lived in Miami. She's a huge fan of the channel. She's always sharing our stuff. Uh, and that's exactly how she got this shout out. So if you wanna be the next shout out, all you gotta do is screenshot this video, share it on your Instagram story, and make sure that you tag Swamp and Stomp, and we'll know that you did it, uh, and you might be next week's shout out. Let's get back to the video. Uh, for this particular encounter, we had just finished what happened in that last video, and we started heading back to camp. We, we were done hunting for the day, and uh, as we were riding, you know, stopping and glassing, and way back uh, at the back side of one of these fields, uh, I spot a deer, and it puts its head up, and it turns out it's, it's a pretty nice buck. I mean, it, it was a really nice buck. Uh, and he was definitely a shooter, um, but we were exhausted, um, and we figured because there wasn't a whole lot of wind, uh, the wind is blowing to the left of, of where you're viewing right now, uh, but we figured, you know, there wasn't much wind, and there really just wasn't a lot of chance uh, that we were going to get two people to be close, uh, close enough to this deer to get a shot. So I decided that I was going to go in by myself. Um, and Robbie stayed in the truck and he filmed from the road. And I have to say uh, that, you know, I tried to pick out some of the better footage from this, but this is really difficult to do. So kudos to Robbie for, for staying on the deer as well as he did. But this is being filmed from like <clears throat> three or 400 yards away. Um, so it's pretty difficult, but I wanted to show it to you because it was such an awesome stock for me. Uh, this was really one of the first times that we had ever tried spot and stock hunting. Um, and I, I, I was expecting to really enjoy it. I didn't think I would actually be good at it. Um, it turns out that I'm pretty good at getting close to the deer. I just, once I'm close to him, I, I, I don't know what to do at that point. Um, anyway, so, uh, the wind is blowing off to the east. So what we did is we actually went further down the road and, and I jumped out of the truck, um, and I headed into this, uh, this field, um, you know, quite a ways east of where this buck was at. 
Uh, and the buck was just feeding, minding its own business. It wasn't chasing a doe or anything. So I felt pretty confident about taking my time and getting close to it. And there was lots of pretty tall brush. So I was able to, or well, at least I thought I was able to stay low enough so I wasn't super visible. But uh, when you watch this footage, and, and keep in mind that Robbie's standing up on the toolbox of his truck. So he's like 10 feet up in the air, or at least the camera is. So I might stand out a little more to hit to this video than, than to the deer, but I felt like I was staying nice and low. I figured as long as I couldn't see the buck, the buck couldn't see me. And I was really taking my time and glassing as much as possible. So I, I go around this pond and I started the stock at probably 500 yards away from this deer. So I was moving relatively quickly at this point. I knew the deer couldn't hear me. Um, and as I'm going, I, I suddenly find this like, ditch it's like a drainage ditch i guess because this is a an active cattle um an active cattle pasture um and they have these little drainage ditches. so uh and the drainage ditch was semi-dry there was water in it you know there was like a foot of water in the center but the edges were pretty dry so i started working my way through this ditch but the ditch basically had like a little berm coming up over the side so so the edge that was on the side where the deer was it was about two feet high off the ground of where the deer was standing so I was able to stay nice and low and use that berm to like really get uh, you know close a lot of that distance so I did that for like 300 yards and then at this point like I knew I was starting to get close and but I had no idea where this deer was I, I kept I, I texted Robbie and I was like you know give me a drop a pin on the map like show me where this deer is but you know communication wasn't great so uh you know by the time he would text me back like i was already a little further so as i'm going through this this little ditch um i'm basically like on all fours i'm crawling um which was fine there was like all these grassy clumps in there and then just dirt uh so i was just kind of crawling over the grassy clumps um so i keep going I, after i covered about 300 yards um I spotted a deer and I figured this has to be the deer like it has to be the buck there's we didn't see any other deer out there uh, so I knock an arrow and you can see in this footage I've got my boat up and that's because I now have an arrow knocked and what I started doing is I was on my knees and I was shuffling my knees um, but there's still those clumps of grass so I would like shuffle my knees and then I would like hit a clump and then I have to like lean and pivot over the clump uh, and I just kept shuffling like that and and I had texted Robbie and I was like I I see I see the deer don't worry about it and he's like oh you you see him I'm like yeah and he says you're at 200 yards but I said there's a deer 60 yards away from me or at least I felt like it was 60 70 yards and uh and then when he said 200 yards I was like well, this can't be the deer. Like, I, I must be looking at a doe or, or something else. So I I took, I, I unknocked the arrow, I put it back in my quiver, and I got down low again, and I started trying to make it past this deer. I started shuffling my way through this ditch, trying to be as quiet as possible, because this deer wasn't far away. Um, you know, and, and then I'm, I'm going, and every now and then I'll stop and peek over this little berm to see if I can see anything and uh, I guess at, at this point Robbie spots the top of my head and I get a text and I look at my my phone and it and it says stop you're right on top of him <laughs> I'm like oh my god so the deer that I had seen was in fact the deer the buck that we were after but it's so difficult to to gauge distance when you're standing that far away because the further away things get like the closer together they look so uh but the problem was that at, at when i'd first spotted him i actually could see uh i could see him really well and the sun was kind of off to my right well after shuffling another 30 40 yards now the buck was between me and the sun and i I remember like he was like you're right on top of him and, and I was about to pull up my binoculars to see if I could see the tips of his antlers and as I was about to pull him up I suddenly noticed through the shape of the sun with the sun blasting me in the eyes 
I suddenly see, you know, the shape of a rack and two ears underneath it just staring straight at me. And I was like, oh crap, I'm busted. So the deer didn't really know what was going on and I just basically slowly kind of hunkered down behind this big clump of grass. Uh, and I was in the ditch and I honestly, I had really good cover and I was, I was low enough. I was just looking through the, you know, like through the grass and I could make out his shape and he was just staring at me. And, um, I think I stood there for like five minutes straight, just waiting for this deer to, to stop staring at me. But it was pretty clear, like he didn't have a clue what I was and the wind was blowing in the right direction. So I figured all I had to do was wait as long as possible. Uh, and eventually he would lose interest and uh, and I, I just I got down low I texted Robbie I said just let me know when he puts his head back down and then I'll start trying to make a move again and almost as soon as I texted him I noticed something moving and I look over and I see the deer coming out to the side and he looks again he looks right at me um, I wasn't expecting him to do that and so he was out in the open now I had a perfectly clean shot and but I was still behind this clump of grass and I was trying really hard I got my range finder up I was trying to get a range but I just couldn't do it I had this clump of grass in my way and I didn't want to expose myself because then he would surely figure out what I was so I was kind of trying to you know I kept ranging over and over until I would hopefully get a range that that made sense because I knew he was like 40 50 yards away uh, but I kept getting you know ridiculous numbers um, and finally he, he gives up on it and, and he bounds off, uh, like towards my left and, and he kind of goes into the, the little, uh, ditch that I'm in and he's like 50 yards down in the ditch. Uh, and he, he's half in the ditch again, perfectly broadside, wide open for a shot. And he's looking over at me, still not sure what's going on. And I got my range finder up and I was, I was shaking. I couldn't, I couldn't get a range on that thing at all. And, and, and this was a valuable lesson because I shoot really heavy arrows. I'm more than confident taking a 50 yard shot, but, um, I need to know the range. I need to get a good range on them. Uh, and if I have to make a, a best guess, I'm not going to do it with those heavy arrows. So anyway, uh, I'm shaking. I can't. I can't figure it out at all. And and he, you know, bounds off again. And I thought that that had to be it. And I walked out of the ditch towards Robert. And I threw up. I threw up my hands. And I was like, whatever, we're done. And then I stop and I look over my shoulder. And this buck turns around and he starts coming back. Like he starts walking back towards me. And he, again, he's looking at me. He's walking towards me, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to give me an opportunity. Well, I've got a little twig between me and him, so he can't really see me clearly. But the sun's pointing in the right direction. I can see him clear as day. The sun is now kind of, like, behind me. And I'm trying to get a range. I'm, I'm leaning a little bit, and eventually he had just had enough. He figured it out, and he blew, and he took off running thousands of yards. I was 40 yards from him. I thought you were right on top of him. But the sun was right behind him. But dude, at that point, I was shook, man. And I, I grabbed my range finder and I'm like, it's <laughs> just like I couldn't get a range on him. Like it was like 20, 50, yeah. you know, like it was all over the place. But not, not a bad day, man. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a day. That is Holy for sure. crap, man. Two stud bucks within 40 yards. Yeah. One of them twice. Yeah, it's impressive. Man, just need to seal the deal. That was fun. All right, guys, it's been a crazy day. Opening weekend down here in South Florida. This is my first time hunting on the ground, and I gotta say, I'm hooked. I gotta do this more often. Until next time, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, and go check out our giveaway. We're actually giving away a tethered saddle and platform completely for free. There's a link down in the description. Make sure you sign up for that. And other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.